Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Slater Group. This is part two of my review of QuickBooks Online, which I'll refer to as QBO throughout the video. In this video, I'll talk about invoicing, billing, and payments. Let's start out by seeing how QBO handles sales to customers. What you should know is that there are two main views for sales data. The first can be accessed by going to Customers. The second way is to go to Transactions, then Sales. You may have noticed that this money bar is the same on both pages. The major difference is that the view below on the sales page shows transactions. While if we go to the customers page, data is grouped by customers. However, if we click on a customer, we get the same type of transaction list view as found on the sales page, except this is only sales transactions from a single customer. So depending on how you want to view your data, you can use either page. What I do like is how you can filter and sort the data. For example, the money bar is actually a bunch of pre-made filters. If I click on unpaid in the money bar, it will show me all the unpaid transactions. But if you look closely here, you'll see the filters applied. So if we click on filter, we can add even more options, like only see invoices from this quarter. And once the results are filtered, I like that it's so easy to sort by clicking on the header. That's navigating transactions, but how about creating them? While you can create sales transactions from the sales page, I find it easiest to do so by clicking on the Create menu, since it's available from any page. Let's look at how an invoice is created. When a customer is chosen, it automatically fills out the billing information as well as the terms. What's a really nice feature of QBO is this tray that pops out on the right. If you have pending estimates, billable time, or billable expenses, they will show up and you can add them all to the invoice with a single click. I also like the interface. To choose a product or service, I can type in the first few letters. And because there are items that have been set up in advance, it fills out some of the details for me. It's easy to use the keyboard to tab along. However, if you are a person who likes the mouse, the functionality is equally as good. You can click and select, and then click and then fill out. Either workflow works. Also, if you look at how the form is spaced, you'll notice it's touch friendly. Something else I like is how I can drag and drop the lines to change the order. Another nice little touch is that you can swap what you calculate first, the tax or a discount. Lastly, you can easily attach documents by dragging and dropping in a file. If you want the customer to see the attachment, all you need to do is click this checkbox. When you go to send this, you can modify your subject and the body of the email. What I like about these invoices is how it looks to a customer on the receiving end. The customer gets an email with a link and it'll go to an online invoice that looks like this. The customer can see a nice view of the invoice, print it, and save it. But more importantly, if you have payments set up, they can click on this Pay Now button to pay the invoice. But I'll get into payments in a bit. Something else that I can see coming in handy is that the customer has the ability to both send you a message and add a file to this. That's pretty cool. Any activity associated with the invoice you'll see below. What this allows for is a complete communications history surrounding the invoice, including any supporting documents. This means you can tell if the customer has viewed your invoice and you can easily have a documented back and forth regarding it. I think this is much superior to email since this can act as the one source of truth. Online invoicing is only available for invoices though, which means you can't do this with estimates. This is unfortunate because online estimates would be such a great tool for customers that need to request changes or approve the estimate. Hopefully it's just a matter of time before QBO gets this capability. Something else that is lacking is the ability for a customer to see all their outstanding invoices, pay multiple invoices, or apply credits to invoices. In other words, these online invoices in QBO don't act as a customer portal. FreshBooks does a really good job of this, so I'd like to see QBO up their game in this area. If your customer isn't paying online, there are multiple ways to receive a payment. If you're viewing the invoice, it's as easy as clicking on Receive Payment. What's smart about QBO is that it'll check off the invoice to be paid, but you'll also be given the opportunity to add other outstanding transactions or apply credits. Receiving payments is simple and smooth. What more can I say? But let's say your customer hasn't paid up. I'd like that you can easily send your customer a reminder. 
Although a major flaw with this is that if your customer has more than one outstanding invoice, they'll receive an email for each invoice. You can send a statement, but this doesn't send a link to pay the invoices online. Instead, it's a PDF of the statement. So as I mentioned before, QBO could really benefit from an online customer portal. Now, if you're a company that has a lot of repetitive billing, then you'll like QBO's ability to set up a recurring transaction. This feature is a bit hidden in that it's under settings right over here. If we then click on new, you can see you can create a recurring transaction for many different types of transactions. I'll choose invoice. The special recurring settings are at the top, while below, it'll look like a regular invoice. I won't go into all the settings, but it's very flexible. The major thing that I see missing is that you can't create a template to be used with multiple customers at once. Like say I was a landlord and charged the same amount to all my tenants once a month. It would be nice to create a recurring sales receipt to be entered once a month. This can't be done with QBO. To do so, you'd need to create a recurring transaction for each customer. Let's switch gears and talk about payments. Getting paid in QuickBooks is fairly easy if you have QuickBooks payments set up. I won't go into the sign up details though. What I will say is that once you're set up, adding an option for customers to pay invoices is as simple as hitting the switch on. What I really like is that you can choose customer payment methods you'll accept, either by credit card, by ACH, or otherwise known as bank transfer, or both. I'm one of those businesses who tend to have transactions in the thousands of dollars range, so losing a significant percentage of that income in credit card processing fees is a real bummer. That's why I really like that I can specify that I'll only accept ACH payments. Another benefit of QuickBooks payments is that you'll also be able to use it for QuickBooks's point of sale, e-commerce, and mobile payment solutions. The other benefit of using QuickBooks payments is that payments and fees are automatically entered into QBO as a deposit. I haven't had an opportunity to test this, but if it works as promised, this really cuts down on the amount of work necessary to process payments. Now, the bad thing about payments is that QuickBooks Payments is your only payment processor choice for online invoices you send to customers through QuickBooks. A lot of other online accounting software have support for multiple payment processors like PayPal and Stripe. I'd really like to see QBO expand its payment options so you're not forced into using QuickBooks Payments. I just spent a lot of time discussing invoicing customers, but what about entering bills and expenses? Well, they act largely in the same way as invoicing or billing. So I'll only point out a few differences. One is that you can set up expenses to be billable. This means that if you choose billable and a customer, you'll be able to later add the expense to a customer invoice or sales receipt. The second difference is that you can either categorize an expense directly to an account or to a product or service. Using the item details can allow you to keep track of inventory. QBO only has basic inventory capabilities, but the fact alone that it has the ability to track quantities of items purchased and sold sets it apart from other small business online accounts and software. This light inventory capability also allows for purchase orders. For those of you who have used QuickBooks Desktop, QBO's inventory is much more limited than what you'll find there, assemblies being one of the key things it can't do. All this may change soon enough though, since in May 2014, Intuit acquired Lettuce, which is an inventory app that it plans on integrating within QBO. Okay, that's it for part two. I was originally going to do only two reviews, but I really wanted to show all the options around invoicing, and this video is around the 10 minute mark. So I'll do another video on QBO that discusses the important export of data, add-ons, reports, some other important features like file attachments, and finally, give my overall opinion of QuickBooks Online.